If you have remote telecom tower sites, you really need to be thinking about remote monitoring. I'm going to show you the top three problems that a good monitoring system can help you detect. Hi, I'm Andrew from DPS and welcome back. Just like any remote facility, your telecom towers are subject to a wide range of different threats. In my years in the industry, I've seen a lot of really interesting and rare and kind of unbelievable problems, but also many that happen again and again and again. And that's really where you should focus your attention as you do your planning. So let's start looking at those. Let's look at the first one, physical security. If one of your towers is out in the middle of nowhere long enough, somebody is going to break into it. They're gonna take advantage of the fact that there's nobody nearby and they're gonna to try to get inside. Now people do this for a variety of reasons. Sometimes it's a young person who's just looking for a bit of a thrill. They're gonna break in and cause some mischief. There will be people trying to steal your valuable equipment and copper theft is always a danger, particularly when the price of copper goes up. So what can you do to protect yourself? There are some very simple things like door contacts. That's gotta be the cheapest. It's a few dollars for door contact. It's just a little magnet and two wires back to an RTU get that and that's just like a simple alarm system would function. Just a little bit up from there is infrared motion detectors. They also latch when they see motion and that can come back to your RTU. That's a good step to do. You can wire either copper or fiber optic around different pieces of equipment, kind of like a bicycle lock would be, and you can get a detection if that gets cut or otherwise removed. So that can be a nice way to monitor valuable pieces of equipment. And ultimately, the other remote monitoring I'm going to be talking about in this video helps you paint a picture of what's going on at the site, and that can help you understand when you have a security problem and help you tell the difference between I need a repair technician versus I first need security or police because this is a security issue. So now let's take a look at our second thing that you can monitor out at your remote telecom towers, environmental levels. So now that we've tackled the problems associated with unauthorized physical intruders into your site, let's take a look at other things that can go on in the physical environment at your tower site. The most common environmental level that you'll want to monitor at most sites has got to be temperature. If it gets too high, you're going to see thermal shutdowns and then eventually equipment damage that gets very expensive very quickly. You want to avoid that. If you're in a cold climate, it's also important to note that temperatures below freezing start to cause other problems. So you want to have a temperature sensor that knows exactly what temperature it is, plus or minus a degree or two, and then an RTU that lets you set a too high threshold and a too low threshold so you can get an alert when those things happen. Right behind temperature is humidity. And as you know, condensation will build up when humidity gets too high, and that's a big issue. But there's a lesser known one as well if you happen to have a very, very dry environment. As the humidity gets very low, you can start to see static buildup and discharge, and that can cause damage. That's a big one to look for. And then as we proceed down the line, you'll get to water on the floor sensors that will just detect if there's any puddling. Your humidity was your first warning there, but a puddle tells you the problem is now even more serious. Then finally, you get into leak and other type, gaseous type sensors. So you have smoke detector, propane leak, hydrogen buildup, which can tell you something's wrong with your batteries. So a variety of different sensors that help you paint this picture of what's going on at your remote site. And imagine how much better it would be if you had all that information in front of you for any tower site that you were trying to figure out you know, what's going on out there. So now let's take a look at our third and final thing that you should be monitoring out at your tower sites, equipment alarms. So now that we've looked at the two types of hazards that can happen out at your tower sites regarding the physical environment, let's take a look at alarms that your equipment will actually self-report. Now these are too many to list, you'll find them in your manufacturer documentation, but a transmitter, for example, might report, I'm experiencing high noise. A lot of gear will say, I'm overheating. Maybe I had a hardware failure. A variety of different things and they output in different ways, Common is contact closures because it's just protocol-less, it's just the closure of a contact that your RTU will pick up with a discrete input. Sometimes you'll have Modbus protocol, something like that, that your RTU actually has to talk in a, a language to be able to communicate with the device. But all of those things, that's probably the most granular data that you're going to get because you're actually talking to equipment rather than having to monitor things with your own sensors attached to your RTU. So that is the final piece that's gonna complement the physical environment is these alarms that are actually coming out of the equipment itself. So if you've made it this far into the video, it's a fair bet that you're planning some kind of remote monitoring project. And I have a tool that will help you do that. It's this remote site survey document. It's got everything I talked about in this video, plus a few other things I didn't have time to mention. And you can download your free copy at the link below. I highly advise that you use it. It's a simple one-page worksheet. There's not even a backside. 
It's a great tool to make sure that you don't miss anything because it's so much easier to take care of things during the planning phase of any project than it is to try to shoehorn something in later when you didn't plan around it originally. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel so that you can see more videos like this one. Until next time, I wish you excellent network reliability.